Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody all around the world. And thank you for joining us today for another Left 4 Dead 2 King and Furtis Highlights of the Week show. My name is MK. I'll be your presenter for today. And I am running with my co-caster, Nine How you doing, my friend? I am doing amazing, MK. Now, on one hand, this round of King and Furnace Cup was kind of the round of the forfeit wins, which, you know, shame on the teams. But... Out of the matches that we got to cover, I have a lot of ridiculous clips, so it kind of works out well because we get to shine a spotlight on the teams that we did get to see because there were some really high-level matches. Yeah, there was a lot of close ones. I've casted all, all the ones except for one on my side were very close, neck and neck, coming up to the very end. A lot of exciting matches that were also this week from both of our sides. And there's a lot of good ones set up for this week as well. And there's only two more weeks left in this in this uh, group stage slash Swiss stage. And then we're going to be going to playoffs. But one thing that I did notice now by looking at all the teams that are going to be matched up. I think we're just which we're going to witness a bunch of playoff games right now for these last two weeks that are just going to happen immediately yep. right afterwards. So you're just fighting on what position they're going to be in until they get to that bracket. But it is nice to see some of these teams square up. I think the group stage is working out pretty well. And I am looking forward for some of the games this week as well as the Kamika Cup, which we'll talk touch base with a little later. That one getting kicked off almost done with their opening bracket stage as well. Yeah, it's actually interesting you bring up the Kamika Cup because they are kind of in tandem right now. Kamika Cup qualifiers are coming to a head. We're entering like semifinal, final territory. And with King and Furnace Cup, like you said, we're uh, reaching the end of playoff, or rather of uh, the group stage, which is where things really start to heat up. Yes, teams are falling out because they're recognizing that spot they're not going to be able to reach it but the teams that are still in it there's a lot of teams on the edge and they have to lock in the wins right now in order to make it happen so a lot of high pressure matches upcoming yep I, and, and not saying that this week the week before wasn't but this one's going to be put a lot more pressure because some of these top teams like we said are going to be playing each other and you don't want to get caught losing to too many of them later in the stage either you want to make sure you're able to solidify that playoff bracket spot i already know some that are probably already going to be in there probably we already agree both of us that ascendant is definitely going to be in the playoffs at this Yo, point yeah. there's going to be no way that they're going to be knocked out at this point solidifying a couple victories up until this point. But the question is, will they win the game this week that was played? Well, we'll just have to touch that base a little later in the highlight show. But I think with that being said, no. You ready to start this off? Let's kick it off, MK. All right, let's switch it over and get these highlights of the week along the way. Show the viewers. And here we go, the opening one. Why don't you take it off now? Okay, we are starting off with Boys in the Favela versus Cat Revenge. Kind of the Australian slash global squad up against China's basically top team here in the Kings and Furnace Cup. We've got, I believe, 8712 for Cat Revenge bringing this in. Uh, this was the first tank here of the match, getting the smacks in there. Unfortunately, Charge Hunter overlap. All of the SIs getting picked off. And Rochelle gets knocked up on top of that awning. How convenient is that? We head over into chapter two, Favela with a clear lead. They've already got 207 distance in this chapter though. Keep that in mind. Tank drops in. Could it be able to isolate onto Hydro while the Hunter, Smoker, Jockey uh, go after the back line? Tank dips out, starts going for the different targets, but look at Favela, able to get all the clears and it really prevents the tank from getting much damage in at all. This was an insane take by the boys in the favela only gets in two smacks now if you if i play this clip and you see those si's back there you already know what's about to happen some serious maneuvers from the front and the back a pincer move coming in hot this time it is a hunter's spitter on the back line for the boys in the favela not a hit you see every day teams usually opting for over the either the overpass or the other area but look at that jockey carries away boom survivors tro dif finding difficulty getting clears eventually going to find the clears nice eight percent hit as we take it over to chapter three you can see favela boys with a pretty big lead as we head into the infamous uh event on this chapter you can see the hunter already spawns in hasn't started making noise yet though 
and the boys on favela eventually going to start pressing the button jockey drops down charge drops down gets a collat charge hunt in the spit don't know what happened to rochelle there but we're getting the smackdowns on the charge as well 20 percent hit out of cat revenge it's massive but now we flip to the tank of cat revenge look at the bonus pretty much the same bonus they almost didn't get anything in on the boys in the favela on any resulting choke points at all up to this point in comes the tank in the hands of a Mui. gonna be doing his best here gets a good number of smacks but where is the SI support it's not really anywhere to be found smoke comes out pulls the other way hunt drops in yes gets a stumble as well jockey trying to chase down does land but tank is dead and now, you know, they do get through with a couple hundred bonus after that. Good tank for sure. But you see the SIs already spawned in on the infected side for the boys in the favela. As we flip over to Cat Revenge's survivor side, they drop down. Hit comes out. Damage Sponge and Nicholas. But he can't get the clears. Neither can his teammates. Jockey on the head carries all the way out of the room. Hunter catch in the death spit. It is so much damage. They are pouring out damage almost actually yes he does in fact go down as we go to this tank look at the different spot uh that cat revenge chose to take this tank out they got two players bleeding out but it's a late reaction here to start leaving the reflex sports store and now Liu's already down here mk and it, there's not really much else for cat revenge to be able to do all that bonus gone wow and even triggered the alarm that is just a, yeah. a recipe for disaster I think it was a good play, but just poorly executed. No. And as we flip over to Chapter 4, you know, up by 2,000 points, I include these just to show that Cat Revenge went down fighting. In comes Mopal. Got the charger behind to the side. Gets a stumble forward. But unfortunately, Hunter with the God Frame. Now we got a couple smacks onto Rochelle. Mopal struggling, but he gets a double into a corner charge smack helping out there and he will be able to find that in cap against all hope but as you can see even on chapter four the boys in the favela were just way too into it they were locked in here spitter charger jockey and a smoker and even before the tank they're just trying to clear out comments right now they're in a wide open spot they got the verticality they got everything but in it comes smoke charge jockey in the spit it all lands boys in the favela were on one for this match that is a guarantee in goes the tank uh, i believe you know they did decently well in this tank but look at the hit and run play style i love it out of caution here he goes in for a smack he dips out now he's he can go either way with the rock right the survivors are like okay i this could go either way and so they don't really know what they're they're where they are safe and it gives a lot of room for caution unfortunately the si follow-up does not land but this was still such a sick tank out of caution. I really respected it. Now, this this unfortunately, I this is my bad. I ordered these wrong. <laughs> and just for fun, we've got Favela, Boys in the Favela tank, just so you can enjoy it. It's about the same as Cat Revenge here. Uh, you see that beautiful ski really changing the tide of the battle. Otherwise, it would have been just one uh, there. But regardless, it was a great double end cap out of the tank. Uh, kind of stuck out there. Okay, right, nowhere to run. Mm, it's just, it's yeah. the way it goes. But Pavila cleans it up. And they get the victory. Ooh, moving on to Berserker's Mood versus Chavo's Band. Berserker's Mood is a team we've been looking at a lot. I've been able to cover a lot of their matches over a number of months. This team has been improving very quickly. And in comes the tank. You can see Chavo's Band. You already know they're caught out here. Very, very dangerous place to be. Look at the smoke. Drags all the way through. And he is dead. Uh, we got one in the corner already. Berserker's mood. This is good as done. The question marks in the chat. They don't know what's going on. That char or that smoke was crazy, and they do turn it into the wipe. Is that a death pull? That was a death pull. I've I don't never know how seen that, that was. Before. Yeah, yeah, that was a death pull. Um, so as we move forward, you can tell Berserker's mood has definitely had the upper hand quite a lot this match. Uh, in goes Chavo's band, trying to find some headway, but in goes the hit from the SIs. Charge will miss, and then I believe the hunter is dead. But look at the jockey, able to carry away. Chavo's band not able to deal with it, and even in a bad spot, they're able to make something happen. But Chavo's band didn't give up. We had the chapter four quarter, 
and they do have an, a pretty nice out of the safe room hit with the Charger Smoker Spitter Jockey. We'll watch it on play. Smoke leading into the charge with the spit. Nice catch. Jockey on the head, keeping them in there. I like to see the fundamentals out of Chavo's band coming in hot. All right, and then we're going to break into the next game coming up. We're going to have Wild and Shocking Asia Ooh. against YBG, and this was an exciting one. And mm -hmm. here we go. We're going to have the first tank committing in. It is going to be on the side of Wild and Shocking Asia. While well, YBG, look at that jockey. Look at the ski Ooh. coming out there. The tank kind of hesitated, but at this point, you know the jockey's going to get in any in, in cap. But I don't know. How does this rock miss now? I'm puzzled wow. by it still. It would have been probably another in cap, but he gets a little too close, and then Nick decides, you know what? That guy is already in cap to his jock, so let's just focus down this tank. And yeah. they are able to clean him up, but they suffer quite a bit. And let me tell you now, this one was back and forth. I don't remember if you were casting with me in this game or not, but this match was won. And look at this is going to be Sushi's tank committing in. Survivor's backing up. And here is where I get a little confused. The smoker gets pulled here. And now he doesn't go for the hittable, but watch Ellis. And I thought he was going to be death punched, but I didn't see that he was on this side of the mm. fence here. And I started freaking out in the game because I thought yeah. it was going to be a death. But they're going to manage to get an in cap. Sushi goes down to about 1,400. Rochelle gets a little close. One more punch off. And that will be a dead tank. And they lose about half their bonus. And now Wild and Shock and Asia trying to convert on the inside of this factory building. They back up into it. The hunter stumble, but the jockey can't cover. Charger cleaned up. Hunter cleaned up. Jockey comes in for a little bit of damage. And that was double-digit damage coming out there. They'll oh, pop yeah. pills. Goes down to about 13%. As we come up to the Ooh. ending here, this this was a little interesting. <laughs> yes. Where they're pushing out into the open. It looks like they're okay right now. I mean, look at they're backed up. Everything's fine, right? right? There's a smoker pole. They can't fit, they can't clear it. The charger lands. The hunter lands, stumbles Rochelle, and it's a rolling tri-cap that comes in. And the damage just ticks up. The car alarm goes off. Even though it looks catastrophic here, they're able to clean it up and they won't take much more damage now before they get into the safe room. And I forget, were you here with me on this one? Now? I was. Uh, I was. All right, all right then I'll, I'll let you take this one as well. I don't want to just take it okay. all. Okay. <laughs> so we do have Stay With Me trying to work with the car and not so much longer. It is going to be up there. Chooses to keep going, of course. Uh, but without cars, you know, we do have that red car over there, but the smoke tries to pull near it. He's pulling away from the tank. Smacks are missing. Charge comes out. Desperation does land. Rock lands as well. Starts going over there. And um, again, the miss smacks so close, but three quarters of the bonus left. And at this point, we're like, oh, this is so good for YBG. They're taking it so safe. But as you can see, the safety play did not work out at all whatsoever. The jockey even able to bring into the spit. This was crazy out of Wild and Shocking Asia. Yeah, they were blocking not quite all the spawns, but they didn't get them all. They missed one, and this hit was just disastrous. The charger yes. lands up top. The jockey separates one down and gets reset. He gets the clear down here. Well, it's going to freeze for a minute for some reason. <laughs> Somehow the car alarm went off. I don't even know idea how that happened. You right. see that the car alarm went off, but yeah. no one's even shooting towards it. And then now, if you're seeing the staircase, you usually know something bad's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, if, if you see a stairwell case coming into play, you know it's going to lead up to more than double-digit damage. They get an in-cap. The hunter was beautiful to cover. It solidified the in-cap going out. They get the pickup. Double-digit damage again. It was almost 20% at this point. And Wild and Shocking Asia. But right here, Nall, watch this charger off the rooftop. Straight into the... Oh, in there, oh, the oh, hunter oh, covers. Oh, 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 oh. The rock comes out. He gets a free rock. And he only loses about 50-some HP for that rock. And now he can just sit here and wait. And now he's finally deciding to go in. They funnel him down very well there when he has to dig this out. Already at half HP. The hittable is unfavorable. Pulled forward. This will be his corner. No one's really shooting him right now, but his support has to sacrifice themselves in order to get this to happen. Hunter is the only one to help. Hunter finds a target, gets cleaned up very quickly by Rochelle. And now this tank left alone, misses a punch, gets one more, and that will be it for YBG. Not terrible coming out, but considering the circumstances, morale healthy YBG was at the end. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And the follow-up hit right out the safe room. Wait for it. On the head. Carry your way. Spit. You can't run through that. Yes, you can. You're going to take the damage for that. And still the charge smacking away Zerk. 
almost going down right outside the safe room. 27% and all. And somehow yeah. they lose 27%, but they get to this point. And mind you, Nal, that 24 lands, the end cap in the back goes out. And they have not fought tank yet. That's the whole thing right now. Ooh. Neither team has fought tank yet. And there's about 80 some percent. I mean, what do you do when you have low HP? They just end up wiping out. Um, yeah. I mean, they were just no HP. It was really easy pickings for them. But right here, as a rolling tri cap comes in, not cleaned up quickly enough, they lose about. I think 18% from that and gets two of the survivors slow. Uh, not even getting to the tank, but right here, no. This was a long time until we got to this commit, let me tell you. Kale yeah. was out there for a while. He gets his first corner, the second corner. Look at them focus down the tank so well. He's down to 1400, but when the support comes in, nobody's shooting him anymore. And it's an easy cleanup for the tank as they wipes out while they're shocking Asia. And look how close that score is 150 points going into the yeah. next chapter. And this is the this is chapter four. This is basically the finale. We see, of course, teams make it in, but you can see they're pretty. They're hit pretty hard. No one's slow. They pop their pills. In comes the hits onto Kiao. Goes down. Has to get an, invest another hit into that, which is pretty big. Uh, but as you can see, they're able to get the double as well as the isolation corner onto Rochelle, and that is the white. Yeah, or yeah, it is. And now, if you look at that score, all the other team has to do, which is wild and shocking, Aja, is survive this tank fight. But first, they gotta not take a lot of damage. They did, they did so well up until this point and all. But look at Nick get melted down, pulled in the death spit, and he gets wrecked. It's unfortunate, but this is it. Zer Axon, risky commit oh path. Strafe jump through the back door. Wild and shocking, Aja just needs to survive. He misses a punch there. They get him down to 2300 HP. The doubles come in there. Got a little too close. In cap, 1800 HP. Double cap comes out. And there it is. Ooh. The charger missed, though. I have no idea how he missed there and all. But look wow. at Axon. Hot pursuit coming down. Gets a <laughs> corner. On to Rochelle. One more punch. Only one more will get the in cap. There's the in cap. 880 HP. 500. He gets a punch here. Look at Hits with a melee. 85. And he dies at the last second. Can Wild and Shocking Asia clutch it? That's the question. Three seconds in from the spawn timer beside the spinner. He spits. He sticks the pickup. The commons come in. Coach can't get out of it. Rochelle, nowhere to go. And they wipe out. And YBG gets the victory. What a match that was. And for the person asking in chat, I don't use auto exec because I'm pretty much a caster. I am not a player. I rarely play. So that's why there is no <laughs> auto exec when you hit that button. <laughs> That was an insane match, but into uh, Let Me Down Slowly versus Hamster Combat. Look at this movement out of Paprik for Hamster Combat. I love it. Jumps on the waterfront, jumps up on to the awning, and is in there. Got one in the corner straight away. The SIs come in just to try to, you know, take some pressure off the tank. But he's already at 1,500. Tries to disengage. Not going to be able to get out of there with more than about, yeah, 175 HP. This is the home server of let me down slowly keep in mind this is russia versus china here we do flip over to hamster combat on the survivor side but they're getting pretty aggressive here for the chip and the tank walks it in now we got a 3-1 split here a little bit with ellis over on the other side starts walking up to try to help out his team but jockey going to be going out he's on high ping he's trying to get it out and jockey's just going to be able to carry away beautiful cover into the tri cap to end the round we do come out to chapter two. Obviously, let me down slowly. You can see from the scoreline, they've been doing pretty well for themselves. But the tank is in, 2,500 HP left. The boom is out, landing. You got all this horde, and HZ is gonna go for the engage right now. He's got a smoker charger, 10 seconds left on the last. Uh, doesn't chase down Nick, just reroutes over. The double cap comes out, beautifully done. And he's got Rochelle in that corner. She's going to go down, but the tank didn't have enough HP, and they will just be able to get one ink cap. Decently done, for sure, but as they walk into this choke, you already know this is the danger zone. They're a little bit late, to be honest, LS is, but they make it work here regardless. Not exactly the most common space, but you still just got that narrow corridor straight into the double charge. Whoopsie-daisy, Rochelle, and the slow get up, three in the spit. It absolutely dismantles hamster combat. Ooh, that was rough. <laughs> that was the, that was the tank's yeah. worth of damage right there. Definitely, definitely. 
But Hamster Combat still keeping their heads in the game. They are down quite a bit, but keep in mind this is their away server. So you can see, let me down slowly, taking their time here. 100 Spitter Charger Jock. Hamster combat drops in. Jockey just hopping around, buying time. In goes the charge. Spit gonna land into the double cap. Hunts Jock with the jockey in the spit, and that's gonna be almost 15% straight away. Unfortunately, they, as you can see from the points now, they did not have the follow up damage. It was just that first hit. As we flip over, we're pretty early into hamster combat survivor. Boom, Ooh. triple cap. Boom on one. They're all over the place. They gotta go all the way over here. Reset. Look at him. He's walking all the way back. There's no doors that he has to stand behind. It's just wide open, carries it around the truck, and it's just so much damage. He even goes down there. We flip over to the final chapter on LS's home server. Look at this beautiful double boom. They're trying to get up and over. Charge Hunter Jockey. I mean, look at the charge. We got a car right here. And this is exactly why that tank is so scary. Specifically, you know, you're trying to get over that choke. You got all the SIs dropping in right on your noggin. And it's tough to deal with. So he does get that down. Just going to grind it out. Leave him to die. And uh, he's got easy pickings from then on. We flip forward a little bit. Tank fight still going on. I wanted to include this because I wanted to showcase. This is his name is the Three Realms of Buddhism, and he was certainly channeling Buddhist vibes as he landed rock after rock with insane focus. Getting the first one, he does get the second one, and look at the smoke set up right there. He doesn't even care because no one's around to clear it. He's not even gonna hit it. Boom! Another rock. Putting on a show for the stream. Thank you very much, the Three Realms of Buddhism. <laughs> That's funny. He's not even knocking him down. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think this one was out of order a little bit. No, no. We go back to the home server. Of, oh, uh, home hamster away. combat at oh, this point. Okay, I you see. can see they. Yeah, they they walk themselves into a very awkward situation here, as is so often the case when they don't go for that corner on the other side of the waterfront market to go down. Charger jockey smoker. The smoker does get cleared, but we got the charger jock right there. They miss, but I mean, look, 184 noob. He's got plenty of HP. They get the wipe. This is a very scary moment, though, for let me down slowly. Look at the tank and the, the jockey player right over here. They can't get the clear. The tank in a very scary position. He's playing keep away. Double smacks. Gonna follow up with the corner. And they get all, yeah, they're gonna finish off Rochelle here. They get the double cap. But it's like, where is the SI support? They're all dead. And somehow, let me down slowly, wiggled their way out of this situation. I don't know how they did it, MK, but they did. Uh, the replay, and then into the live round. Look, they made they managed to get 373. They're in the lead on the away server, but Hamster Combat, they're not out of this yet. They're holding strong, beautiful charge into the other SIs, causing a disturbance, charge spit, jockey carrying up the stairs. It is such massive damage. I love this follow-up by Hamster Combat. Big damage. Another scary situation for Let Me Down Slowly. High ping, double boom, trying to clear the horde. But look how efficiently they do it. They're barely even getting slowed down. The tank is 2,500 by the time he commits. They're running around. They're clearing out all the commons. And he's just going to be able to get this one in cap. And he starts to climb away with 1k HP. Just got this charge, which gets killed before it can even land. And again, Let Me Down Slowly. So strong and powerful in there. We do flip over to Hamster Combat Survivor side on Chapter 2. You can see they've got 75% plus of the bonus left. And they've got the tank down to 2k HP. And it's like, they can do this. They're in a great spot here. Hamster Combat. I keep saying this. They, they had great positions. Look, the SI hit comes in. Yes, the Charger lands. Yes, the Smoker and Jackie land. But they clear out the tank before all that mayhem begins. They get the cleans, it's about 10% on the tank, and that's it. But, unfortunately, it's a, a heartache strikes over and over again for Hamster Combat, right when you think you're starting to claw their way back in here. The triple cap, with the spit, ready to go. It all lands in the spit. Goodbye, bonus. Goodbye, HP. Ooh. And oh. that's on their home server, too. Looks like he's a little laggy just watching that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. And then things start to fall apart here for Hamster Combat. The tank 
doing his best. He decides to play with the car here, which is a strange uh, decision. We don't really see tanks go for this car very often. The SIs are dead. Just got the jockey and the tank. You know, he's just going to get mopped up really easily here. 2k HP left. The survivors using uh, their free area perfectly. And boom. A double in cap out of nowhere. Hamster Combat keeps putting up a fight. <laughs> and it's insane to see. Uh, but as we go to chapter 4 of the final server. The drop down out of Let Me Down Slowly. You can see they're still leading. So this match is done. Uh, they have won this by a great margin, but Hamster Combat throws one more final swing at them. The spit, they're swimming in it. The hunter or the smoker catches well. The car coming out, and we flip forward. 184 noob is dead. Down is a little homesick. But look at this attempt from the survivors. I thought this was so sick. They wrap the tank around. He drops down. They don't know what to do. He go, he goes up. He goes down. They go for the pickup here. And it's like, is Let Me Down Slowly going to be able to wedge themselves in back into this chapter? And they just barely can't do it. With that corner, still got 1200 HP. The rocks come out. They won't be able to finish that off. But I thought that was such a sick effort from Let Me Down Slowly. And they won the game, of course. And we go into Zeta Pen versus Ewan. And thank you for this, the subscription, Violino. I appreciate it. But look at this tank for Zetapen. The charger comes out. He is unsuccessful. No stumbles either because Ellis jumps. And the tank just getting kited around. The jockey gets him a punch here. I have no idea how that was not a double punch. But he gets Rochelle into the corner. And what it looks like was going to be nothing. Turns out to get four hits. But, but Ewan, very impressive, walks in with a massive bonus. As you can see, that score. 13-32. But Zetapen up to this point have taken just a little bit of damage every hit it was about seven to eight percent up to they got to this point then it hit the double digits and then they have to go up and fight the tank they're at 63.6 yeah. and unfortunately it was a little bit one of this this uh, teammates on zeta pen decided to do something that wasn't the greatest for his team so we're just going to cut to the end to the two pe <laughs> two people almost make it but what a two cap come out they don't even shoot either one of them the charger gets a despawn still had 460 hp 100 full hp and as we go on, to Zina, Zinta is going to go in with his tank on the second chapter. And there was also some audio issues with this chapter for some reason. I don't know why, but for none, nonetheless, he is not able to get anybody yet. Still has not punched anybody. He throws a rock out. The rock has missed. He has still not gotten anything yet. Still nothing, now. And look at that. That is going to be a goose egg. Nothing able to come out from the tank. And you win showing the reason why they finished second place in the really big tournament seven right as they send in rake's gonna come in here he gets a er very early corner under rochelle second punch was at 4700 hp and the in cap goes down at 3200 that's not good for the survivor team as he gets his next corner so quickly and look at none of the si has even landed yet they're just jumping around to keep the guns off nick manages to get the skeet but the distraction was already enough for them to come in there get the wipe Rake cleaning up the survivor team and if you see that point delta about 2400 points on pacifice is even for pacifice it's hard to mount a comeback as we yeah. go into the chapter three or one of sacrifice whatever you want to call it he splits the survivors two and two good job of coming around the corner now he yeah. does have a tri cap for his help he punches the survivor too far away the smoker gets the pull the jockey can get the cover Ooh. the tank has a corner but there is no other si to help and here he tries to get the other survivors instead of guarantee the kill and i think he should have tried to get the grind out as he has to decommit but unfortunately for zeta pen that's going to be most of the damage they get for the chapter and this one was a good one now watch this the jockey oh. lands charger late Go swimming with the fishes. Oh, he is no oh. longer inside. He is outside in the water, and he is dead. Unfortunate for him. And usually you know what happens. If you only have three survivors left, they don't make it very far after that. They wipe out his tank. And here is Gordo Wind coming in for his team, chasing a survivor down. A support one on the opposite side, not helping the tank whatsoever. And unfortunately for Gordo Win Promessa, he is going to take the high ground. No fast climb there. And he is not going to be able to get the cutoff. 
and we're going to see one no-hitter, and this one is going to be another as he decommits, and he is not able to get anything else now. I hate to see it. That's the way it goes. Yeah. Zeta Pin has impressed me for sure, but I mean, come on. It's you win. Uh, but we head into uh, Winterfell versus No Skilch Academy. Here on Chapter 2, uh, they will be bringing in the tank. No, no, this was posting. These got a little bit out of order, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but the, you can see the, the importance of stage hazards. I don't know if you noticed there, but Nicholas walked right into the electricity and went down right when the hit was coming in. Uh, as we flip over to No Skilch Academy, a, a little bit of an iffy spit block, um, but they are going to try to make something happen here still. The Hunter, the charge, charge does land, and he just lets it be. Starts going for the others. Charge gets cleared, finishes him off. Gonna smack into the corner, beautifully done by Monica here. Follows it up. Chasing him down. And there's not much that No Skills Academy can do at this point. 2,500 health left on Monica. Love the keep away. Love the AI spitter going in super hot fire. Uh, gets uh, Gonna be able to get some smacks. Missing, but come on. We got the follow up here. Smoker Hunter to finish the job. There it is. Beautifully done. We move forward a little uh -oh. bit here. Uh oh. And you know when we see the spawns like this, it's pretty scary. But look at Rochelle. She just jumps straight up. And they're able to deal with it. I love this movement by Team Winterfell. They move into the corner, force the charge for damage. Good reaction by No Skilch Academy. They milk it for a lot of damage. But they avoid with certainty uh, the the death charge. Yeah, I thought for sure. You know, if you see that, you, sometimes that's what you're gonna see. Yeah. <laughs> oh they no. They escape heartache, but we got the jockey pull down here. And I want you to look at Coach, because uh, Coach starts getting a little bit aggressive. He says, "No, no, get back there." And Coach goes down off of that. I don't know how that happened, MK. He collided with the roof, goes uh, ricochets off it, hits the ground, and is down. So that was ridiculous. Two down, they get the wipe with ease with two down like that. We go to No Skilch Academy, and it's a very familiar spot. We're very, very familiar with this spot. But I'm going to tell you one thing. It is not a death charge because you see the charge set up down there already. So go ahead and get that out of your head. This is not a death charge clip. The charge comes up from behind. Nicholas jumps off the railing. Jockey pull down. Okay, it's looking like a lot of damage. Wait for Ellis. Oh! He jumps into the water. I told you it wasn't a death charge. But <laughs> TT dies nonetheless. So, we've got Winterfell with a slight lead here. They're up by, you know, you take away the 130 points. They're still up by a good, like, you know, 200 points. And Chapter 4, we've talked about this. Not the best for comebacks. Uh, but we've got them circling the hole right now. I don't know what could happen here other than maybe one survivor getting caught out, jockey on the head, carried away, and dead. How about that? Uh, that can certainly change the flow for the finale, can it not? As the tank rolls it in, NNK on the SI side for Winterfell. Um, NNK needs the wipe. You can see from the points, uh, No Skills Academy has to survive this and then get a little bit more. They get the end cap. They get some SI damage for sure, but 500 health left. He's dead. Two survivors still green pills. And Winterfell is not going to be able to wipe. They are not going to be able to kill them off. And that will be the dub. Okay, this is this is out of order, but this is still a sick clip. Get ready for this. This is not an SI clip. Uh, this is for the survivors. Wait for the ready up. Now look at that hunter. Hunter is going to go ahead and pre-spawn. And Nick shoots him through the wall, just like that. He's like, yep, I know exactly where you are. He shoots him through the wall, and that hit's completely gone to start it off. It, they do get a little bit of damage in, but I thought that was ridiculous. Uh, and, and also, this on Chapter 1, Winterfell, they might not have won the round, but they had a lot of really, really interesting clips. Uh, the tank bringing it in, in the hands of Pooh, one half of Team Puda, and the Hunter comes in. 
I believe that's Godframe. But look, he hits him right into the water just about. But Monica, coach, hangs himself to avoid the hit into the water. And the tank is dead. I thought, I was like, oh my god, Monica, you're blowing my mind here. Now, unfortunately here, this is not the best Monica clip. Uh, because we see Monica get boomed on. Playing pretty aggressively here. The only one who's in the green. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to play aggro. I'm going to clear up comments. I'm going to get some chip damage on the Oh, the tank's on me. Oh, I'm dead. Look at that smack. Rocked. Look at this. Talk about snipe. There's a player on their team named Scope. Well, the tank had the scope right there. Because he's going to be able to finish it off. And this will end up just about being the wipe. You saw uh, the after they got one kill. And then NNK walked into the stage hazard after getting picked up, and they were able to finish it off just like that. Unfortunate. You hate to see it, but sometimes there's environment hazards. It's just some of the maps do have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a neck and neck match. That looked like that was a good one there. Anala. There's a, there was a lot of good ones this week, but yeah. as we roll into the next one, we'll have Goat against Team Bot. And this one was a battle, let me tell you. I, again, no, I don't remember if you were with me with this one. You did so many m matches with the two, this and Kamika Cup. And even though they were forfeits, I don't remember if you were in this one worth right. me or not. But look at Sawa. Does it look good right now? He's able to get the card between there. And watch Coach able to get out of the corner. Coach is safe. You think he might not be able to do anything, but look at this. Around the corner, flip. Gets Ooh. Bravo. And now watch, watch what happens, how close this kill is. Right here, watch after this punch. Look at his health. Woo! 105, they all had to reload every gun at the last second and they couldn't wow. get the last shot off. Oh, you hate to see it. But that's just the way that it goes. But now Bravo has to return the favor as it has happened to him. He was killed off and he was not happy about it. Can he return the favor? Look at that. He slides it in mm. between the poles. How and does he do it? I have no idea. Look at this commit path right here. Jumps through, all over there. Bloop! Gets it right through there perfectly on the Linux. <laughs> Turn punch. Parks it right on him. Gets the kill. And another in cap. Oh my god! A little insult for in injury right there. They get Sawa down. They'll be able to make the safe room, but not much bonus. But here is going to be Acer's tank committing. Charger gets a double charge. Yeah, look at him fly through the air. Yes, there was fall damage on that. Unfortunately, he got too close to Sawa. That was a god frame rock. So he's not going to get that in cap. And you know what happens when your support's dead on Swamp Fever? It usually means your tank is not going to do anything else except for fall into the water. But Rochelle almost gives him a punch. Not going to happen, Ooh. though. And now, same tank, other side, Healy committing. Look at all the damage done to bot already. They were taking about 6% per hit during the holdout. They just couldn't stop the damage. Hunter lands, clear, charger, nothing. Jockey is trying to help him, but the tank has got nothing yet. Rock hits a tree again. He has hit the third tree so far. That's the only thing that he's hitting. He's not hit a survivor yet. He chases them all the way back to the safe room, but Healy will die off, not getting one hit. And that was actually the least amount of damage that they have taken before, on that map was during the tank now <laughs> per hit no lie that's crazy it was only three percent now purple they try to rush him here the one survivor gets caught off and look at that purple Ooh. was ready for it gets an easy kill here uncontested pretty much the only thing that i thought was here is maybe you throw a rock instead of doing that but it didn't really matter he only loses a couple hundred hp before he gets the kill and now he'll be able to sit tight and wait to see if he could get the wipe with his team can he do it they desperately need it. Here it comes. The charger, nothing. Hunter lands, and it's not going to be the wipe. It's going to be a little bit more damage on Sawa as they focus that tank down so fast. He had 3k and just died wow. like that as they focus him down. No support to help. And they will manage to make safe and watch this car hit now. Uh -oh. Watch how uh -oh. beautiful this is. Bloop. Uh oh my In God. Insane car hit. And the survivors kind of play a little too cautious here. And watch 33 just punch the end cap guy. I love this. This was, <laughs> an, this was an amazing play. And look at how passive the survivors are playing. They're not really pushing the issue yet. And by the time they push it, it's already too late. And they get double capped. And the tank gets a corner. Punches Bravo. And this is where the tank just didn't have enough HP to finish it off. And they will survive. But, or they will manage to get a lot more distance. They'll survive for now, but eventually, bot will wipe out a little bit later on the map. 
making the finale. This is everything they need here. David needing a wipe down about 800, uh, about 800 points here. He gets his log in a decent space. The charger did land and get a slam. He gets the okay. in cap, but how difficult is it to get a grind with these logs? Now we know, and he yeah. decides he's not going to be able to get it as that one didn't even hit him. And now he just got to try to delay this. I don't know what that rock was, but I thought maybe he hit the guy behind him, but he hits the bush. Yeah. There he gets the corner. I love this boomer, by the way. I love how this boomer picks his target. Watch, boop, in the air. Hey! He gets him as he's falling, <laughs> and he manages to get two in caps with his tank. Not bad at all from David, but they desperately needed the wipe and not going to get it. And actually, look at this. Look at their health. They had two in caps store the tank, and they're still green. And this is the second tank now. Yeah. They are so healthy at this point as he decides to commit after Rochelle. Rochelle gives her the jukes. The hunter sees it. The tank trusts the hunter. But the Uzi ski comes out, and Acer follows Rochelle to the corner, gets one punch, tries to eye up another one, misses the second one, getting too greedy. And they will kill off that tank and make safe room and put this game almost out of reach because at right. this point and all, they needed, I believe it was 1,400 points with the exact score. And er, and unfortunately for them, they have almost lost too much at this point. 200 points to land to spare. Uh. Bravo gets hit by the log, unfortunately. The tank has a corner. Smoker is distracting. They keep Linux with more HP. He loses his corner, but gets it back. One more punch gets the in cap. 2,200 HP. He decides to push Rochelle. Rochelle is not paying attention to her surroundings. Walks into the log, mm. gets in capped, dies off the tank. And now it's a jockey and a charger to try to clean it up. But the damage is already done. The charger misses. Jockey is successful. The GG's come out. And that will be Goat beating Team Bot on Swamp Fever. Week 5 of the Swiss stage. Jeez, what a game, game, though. No, that was a crazy game. It might not seem as as close as it was at the end, but it really was up to the end of map three. That happens a lot. I found that that happens a lot. The score does not always represent the gameplay. Um, so we've got Never Lose versus In Memory here. This was um, a, a, this was a pretty rough matchup for In Memory. Never Lose had their number here during this match very first hit out the gate not quite able to get the death charge but they will certainly take it jockey carrying away smoker being a nuisance they don't quite of course they've got the door here but still what a hit out of the safe room by never lose as in memory struggles their way through here they've had to pop two pills the tank's not in quite yet and uh, they are gonna send this hit up and over at the Hearst Shipping Co. This is such a great choke point. The stairs, of course you can jump on the railing, but they run it back. Charge comes out, Hunter initially missing, but this kind of works out because he eventually catches right there with the boom stumble back into the spit. Where are you going? And that is going to be a massive hit. Uh, uh, switch over to in memory on chapter two walking out of the safe room you can see never lose with a big point lead so rochelle walks out too far tries to clear the charger smoke and nobody can clear it because of the triple charge all the si's in there boom stumbling they can't go anywhere out of the safe room and that is why you got to gun it out of there 65 percent after they walk it out Flipping back to chapter one, this was a good attempt by Team Captain Yam for In Memory. I did want to uh, highlight this. He is going in. He gets the corner. The charge comes out, ready to go in there, but he's running up and down the stairs. Can't quite catch out Rochelle. He goes for a last attempt forklift, which I do really respect with all the SIs dead, but he just can't get it to cooperate with him. And that will basically be the match. Never lose getting a very decisive victory for that one living up to their name and we flip over to the penguins of madagascar versus the pulverizer kings um we've got the jump in here penguins of madagascar on the tank they, i like this run back to the corner but with the car set up they're forced over to this end but look they jump up and over and this car's in an awful spot 
I did not like them leaving like that before the car was even hit because it walks them into a very uncomfortable situation and the Penguins take perfect advantage of that. The Charger catching, Jockey in there, of course Tank will just take that. Uh, but the Smacks coming out, 3k HP, where is the damage? Jockey, Charger still alive, Charger for the recommit here, and in they go, corral them into the corner, and they will be going down like dominoes. Oh man, the turn punches, beautifully yeah. done, beautiful setup, it was a good play for the survivors to push, but they just didn't capitalize in my opinion. Yeah. That one survivor got punched way too early with the corner now, just from my personal perspective. Agree, agree. Uh, so as we kick it to chapter three, we got the Penguins of Madagascar. Um, so far, you can see from the scoreline, they have been looking insane up against Pulverizer Kings. I thought this would be a pretty close matchup. But look at this hit from Pulverizer Kings. The triple cap, the charge into outer space, spit not far enough. And they will have vision line on that charge target. But still, a great amount of damage by Pulverizer Kings redeeming themselves. Unfortunately... For the Pulverizer Kings, it is fleeting here at MK as they repeat the same mistakes that the Penguins made just moments before a smoke pull. They will be able to clear that uh... with the catch, the collateral charge especially, and this was rough. This was rough. This was a massive hit. They won up the Pulverizer Kings, and it was unfortunate. Tank brings it in. Pulverizer Kings getting caught with their pants down a little bit. I felt like they could have brought it down into the kind of cafeteria area. You know, lots of space, lots of stuff to jump on. Very tough to get in there, but they kind of get caught out here trying to get chip, and they pay the price by the Penguins. The Penguins uh, got them marked on that one, and they are on notice with the wipe, and I believe they call GG at this point. Yeah, it looks like it was mathematically impossible by that point. Oh, a little bit, little yeah, bit out of order. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do flip over. Uh, chapter 1 just kicking off. You see the Penguins only getting 46 points so far. Uh, the uh, Pulverizer King Sehe walks it in. But look how fast he goes down. He's already half 2K. And come to SIs, which makes sense. You know, you do want to hold him for a bit. But he didn't get any kind of corner, any kind of down. Uh, he does eventually land, you know, a good number of hits on Ellis there, but he's going to go down without too much damage. But I loved this decision out of the Penguins. Look at this. They've got a 2-2. They sack into the quad, not getting a ton of damage in. Spit block. We still got the spit and the boomer alive. Boom spit comes in. Death spit. They run through it. Two of them just gun it through. I'm like, what's going on here? They are gunning. They're, they're eyeing down a quad, right? But it doesn't end there. They run through the fire as well. They are like, full sin, take the damage. We don't want to deal with the quad in the side rooms. We don't want to deal with any of that. We just want to run it straight through the fire, get set up out here, wide out in the open, and look at how the quad plays out. Hunter in there. Jockey, charge. They deal with it all almost instantaneously, and it paid off. The investment of their health paid off perfectly pulverizer kings gonna be eyeing down the tank of skipper trying to get that early chip in coach walks himself into a not the best spot gonna give that off the out the corner pretty easily 2400 hp left as he gets it down now the si's come in with the down jockey charger overlapping but no one is there to get any sort of clear and they will be able to walk it in and find the in caps oh it's unlucky this was also the tank for Pulverizer Kings. I wanted to shine a spotlight on this. This is a great setup. Uh, the same setup that uh, the Pulverizer Kings had on their survivor side. Look at the catch. Got them split 2-2. Two, two. They're both capped. Right there, they both go. Look at their health. They go down. Both of them. And we got 2,600 left on Imperfect Boy. Uh, but we still have the Jockey alive. No SI support. Pulver or Imperfect Boy chooses to disengage here. They both get back up at this point. Tank goes to re-engage, double boom, the car. Oh, right onto Kowalski's head. <laughs> Jockey's still alive. This is a good spot. Look at the car setup. I thought they were going to be able to grind Kowalski out. He goes for it, but really, really unfortunate vehicles. Coach just barely able to dodge it. And as you can see, 80 HP 
he can't quite get the clears. Throws out a desperation rock and trying to climb up to the car. Not gonna be able to make it. Hunter comes out, look at the health. Look at the health, he's on literally nothing, but they find the pickup. Oh, he's at 20, that was so close. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ooh. here we go to each Pakmak. It's hopefully Nailed I said it. that correct, against Babalanya. And this was a battle back and forth, let me tell you, this tank's gonna commit. It looks like he's gonna start off and he gets the doubles, the smoker was a nice two cap from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if you look here, this is where Coach goes down. He has 2,200 HP, gets another punch, and another punch. The Hunter lands, but the Smoker couldn't cover it. Look at this. This is questionable here. I wonder why he threw the rock there and not try mm -hmm. to push back Ellis with that 1,000 HP. He wanted to guarantee the damage. And that will allow the Survivor team to pick up the, the his their teammates that have been in-capped. And now they will make safe room. They don't really take much more damage, but now it's going to be Yoi for Ichpokmok taking his tank in. Smoker early pull, gets a punch. All the survivors run out of that corner. This is his corner. He's missing punches now. Gets another punch when he's down to 2,800. There's another one. In cap, 2,400 HP, and they decommit, and he hides up here. Now, this looks pretty good during the circumstances for the SI as they wait for Snipe to come out. But I don't know what this Charger is thinking here now. When the tank tries to get to higher ground, watch this Charger. I don't think you were here for this one, though. <laughs> I wasn't. I but wasn't. look at this. I don't know why the Charger decides to go up there and gets shot down. Now he oh, tries to no. transition. Now he recommits. The Jockey covers. The Hunter comes in and the Charger. And he kills one of the SI by himself. Oh. And... He, Look at how healthy Babalanya is. And they're able to clean up the tank and take a pretty good lead after map one. And now it is going to be Babalanya in the corner. And this is going to be Betts with his commit. He has a tri cap. The early corner was nice. Gets a punch there. They focus him down to about 4k. The hunter will land. He decides to stop here. Throw rock. After Ellis, it lands. Switches over. Gets the in cap. And then he's going to get out of here to high ground. As he does have about 2,800 HP now, but even if you have that much with no help, you'll die super fast. And he's going to try to drag this out as long as possible. And here's going to be, again, the rock lands. They get the pickup. The boomer lands. The tank drops in. Double <laughs> punch in cap. And that'll put two survivors down, but that will kill him off. And that puts Babalanya against the wall. But right before his safe room... Look at this shot. The Charger will land one slam. He's in the spit, but will Coach die? He's black and white. No, he is three wow. HP, but the elbow drop from the spitter Ooh. gets him. <laughs> and nobody was paying attention for the spitter, and he gets the wipe. <laughs> wow. I love it. Yeah, okay, now we're going to go to the other side. This one's, this one's interesting as well. And yes, the jockey does gra uh, did grab him on that chapter in midair. That is possible. It's rare, but it happens. But Yui eats back-to-back -back rocks. No yes. help from the teammates to clear it. And he has no choice. And they will pick him up. And here's Yui's commit again. 1,200 points down. Nice stumble. Punch into Rochelle. Turn punch. Grabs Yui. Another punch onto Yui. Now the tank's kind of stuck here. The boomer lands. What is he going to do? He takes the high path. And he has no choice but to de decommit. And he gets stuck. And he gets uh, out with 59 HP. 36. But what can he do with a 36 HP? No. This, this is what you could do. You could throw rocks and land them oh. from across the map. Well, there's double punches going on by the smoker. Another in cap goes out. Rock is flying. That was so close now. I don't know how that Bro. didn't hit. But making great value. And now they have a survivor black and white trying to crawl to the safe room. Can they return the favor and not let Yoi make it or not let Betts? Or are they going to do so? The boomer lands. Charger rockets in, misses, but gets an in cap, punches Rochelle, and Rochelle will die. And they they trade survivors on map three, but they will be able to make it in with the rest, rest of the three survivors, but no bonus, really, to speak of. As Snipe now, this is funny. Snipe throwing a rock over the top, gets it, lands it. Wow. Gonna decommit a little bit, lost 700 HP. He wants to drag this out because he knows they're dead. There he goes. Now, look at this. There's a pole separation, which is beautifully set up. Now, watch the survivors as he decommits here. And the survivors, oh, they're gone. Oh, they're gone. They know that there is nothing in the front to threaten them. As Snipe has to chase. 
try to stop them to get that 194 points with three survivors. Can they do it? No. Can they stop them? Smoker is up. What's the first spawn? The best thing they can ask for. It's going to be a charger. Oh. They have a survivor slow. Charger is up. He lands, but Nick gets stuck on the thing. The common. He jumps over, gets him, and he won't let Nick nice. in. And if you look at the bonus, it is pretty much gone because of that in cap going out, and they will get nothing for it. But now we're going to go back to the side. It's now each Pokemon going with their survive side. Two cap lands. Charger going Fist City onto Yoi. The clears were very slow here now. And they get 20% from that, which is huge. As Senji needs to roll in, the nice boomer comes in. Coach gets cornered so fast. He's at 5,000 HP when that corner happens. He punches him on top of the the, oh. the, 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 the bridge, but no in cap goes out. And look at the boom guy. Just run up to the tank and gives him everything he had left in his gun. And they kill him off. So Snipe goes down, but the, for the fact that he doesn't get in cap. Snipe was able to put his whole clip in the back of that tank before he goes down, which was big. And look at this tri-cap coming in here. Here, rolling tri-cap comes in. Survivor has to clean it up in the front. The bottom one's swimming in the spit. And that was massive damage onto Babylonia. And each Pockmock needed that. And this is their tank. Commit is in. Charger is covering the front, but the survivors don't go for it. But now this charger has to come out and just misty charges from a mile away. <laughs> but the tank was at 300 HP and they needed to support him. As they'll get an in cap on the outside. Roth will get an in cap on the inside. But that'll be all. As they do get the wipe. But look at look at how healthy each Pockmock is. And Mila commits immediately. And they have not cleared out the commons here and all. And watch as they try to push forward in the map. The commons just come running in. The common locks are happening. They cannot do anything to fend off the SI with the commons. And Rochelle is caught up. The smoker is just waiting to clean it up easily. And look at that score. It was yeah. 200 point game. If they survive that, they would get the victory. And I have the feeling that they're going to meet each other again in the bracket stage. As soon as that comes into play. But what a game from each Pockmock and Babylonia. That, that was insane. Also, I love that cemetery tank spot. Flagrant disrespect for the dead, jumping on the tombstones like that. But that's sick. Oh, oh no! Here we got Signalis versus La Obscurite. Starting off with this is a hard earned five percent. I say five percent. You're like, okay, yeah, it's a good hit. But look at this: the hunter catch into the smoke around the corner. Charged by his time, gets him all the way around there, but he does get cleared out. I still thought that that was a sick hit out of La Obscurite. Uh, on the finale here you can see signalis at this point up a bit and you're gonna find out why that is the case eventually but wait the log right away into the rock into the smack and we're like oh signalis just completely through charge jockey still alive tank hunting them down 3k hp left free smack on to rochelle this SI's trying to find him. The sh movement out of Nicholas. Oh my god. And he is completely out of there. The rock gonna land onto him. But they can't finish the job. It we flip over to the tank of Signalis trying to get it done, but Lobscurite does not want to give it up. They've got 1600 bonus left. They've got potential 800 distance. They can still bring it back here. The tank of the Kali cut wide out in the open. Hunter does what he can. Lands a smack for the tank. Well done. But that's pretty much going to be it. As we go to the tank, you see they took a lot of damage. They cannot afford to take any hits during this tank. But the Hunter completely isolating. And that is going to be that they cannot afford to let this damage through coach tries to clear it smoke says nah -uh. it, tank says nah -uh. nobody is getting this clear on this hunter if the tank has anything to say about it and that is skyness going down as well as uh signal or as well as la obscurite's hopes of winning this here was a nice little tank out of la obscurite starting it off big uh, and I thought, oh, this is going according to plan for La Obscurite. Missing some hits, yes, but you see the charge. You can barely see him. I didn't even notice him right there. So you can see Miles' HP going down, down, down. And they get the double cap straight out 
of the safe room. Two players down, just like that. Uh, and as we flip over to chapter three, this was what really sealed the deal. You see, La Obscurite is up in the lead, but Bully is already down. The survivors ran it through, but they ran into some trickiness here with the car. Charger, the smoke catch, hunter catch, charge isn't even needed at this point. Gonna go ahead and finish them off. Look at the hittable control. Goodbye. And not quite a two for one deal, but let's go ahead and finish that up. <laughs> Oh, poor Lobscurite wipes out there, but I believe they did get the win, though, didn't they? Lobscurite did. No, no Signalis got the win off of Ooh. that. Yeah. Yeah. But all right, here's the match of the week. Kakori and Ascendant and all this was an amazing game, so oh, sit tight. Yeah. There is a bunch of highlights for this one, as this one has pushed the, the edge of the top two teams playing, and it was exciting. Kryja digging out his car and trying to bring it in with that two-boom, see if he can have an opportunity to commit with some commons. They're a little slow to getting there. He splits them. Three and one, or two and two, more like it. Gets his corner onto Grizz. Another punch onto Grizz. This is going to become a, a, a thing onto Grizz, by the way, as it keeps yeah, focusing him. Yeah, I remember that. As we have a freeze. And I'm not, okay, there we go. Pause. Yeah, I'm Quick not quite pause. sure what that was, but there goes an in cap. The car perfectly oh. lands. Yeah, it has to eat that. And here comes the grind out. Oh, Easy peasy. Kryja with 900 HP gets onto the other side. Can he get Grizz out now? Even though there's two survivors blasting him with shotguns. Oh, the rock comes out there and delays it a little longer, knocking the survivors back even though it didn't land. It was enough time for him to kill off a second survivor. But more impressively so, they do kill them. Watch this now. That's right. They are both still alive. Unreal. They ran the rest of the map. Boomer has to come in. He'll get one boom. But look at Jockey and Hunter. Can they clean it up? Here comes the Hunter, but the Jockey wasn't ready. The M2 on the Jockey. And they will solidify safe room, getting a couple points. 68 to be exact. 430 map one for Hikori. As we switch it over to Ascendant, it is Ascendant's turn to go with their survivor. Look at him all swimming in the spit. Double digit opening attack. A big time coming out there for Team Hikori now. Yeah. Uh, and, but that being said, in comes the tank of Shockwave. Car going to be avoided. He drops in, cuts him off. It's looking good, but he's missing the smacks. He's already down to 740 HP, MK. And they go. The tank actually gets a, a down, almost getting a cap at the car as well, but it's inevitable. He does go down. Ascendant looking poised to get a nice little lead. And indeed, you can see they're up by over 600. Charge comes out, lands. Jockey on the head. Carries off to the side. Hunter keeping him in the spit. This was such a sick hit out of Hikori. What a bounce back. Yes, it definitely was. That put the momentum tone for this map as Zyko wants to commit immediately before the survivor team is able to get back inside. There's the oh pole. He splits them, punches them far away, decides to commit on the inside, and the survivor who is out by himself is able to shut everything down, and Zyko has to get out of there in danger of coming out with no points. Look at this decommit. And the pull down gets him his corner. Yeah. But Ascendant doing a phenomenal job on focusing down Zyko, only allow him to get this in cap onto Krycha. And I think due to the circumstances, good job by Akori maximizing the damage, but more so I would I, I, look at this, I'm sorry. Oh. This is the this this was quite something to see. That jockey was so well timed and all. I mean yes. literally the last Perfection. possible second. And do you think one time is just good enough? Nah, no, let's do it again. Mm. And now watch this smoker going to catch the alley-oop of the survivor as they go through. Look at this. Whoop. <laughs> he catches them right Where's and he, he going? goes in. And now the survivors have to make an executive decision just to stay on the bottom. And this will not bold well for them either as they just stick down there. Rochelle rushes up. The charger was ready for it. Charger finds Rochelle. Slam. Yeah. Spit. And Kryja is now black and white. What impressive infected play by Hikori Ooh. there. Double reset coming out and all, giving them a full another hit. That was disgusting. We see they've got 228 bonus left, trying to lock it in. Boom comes out, Jockey Hunter Charger still alive. Jockey on the head, charge. Hunter connecting as well. Down goes Innuendo, down goes Krycha. 
dead Ghost Krycha, more specifically, and the bonus is evaporating. I do think they still made it to the safe room with three. Following it up with Frey's tank again. Survivors getting caught out, not in the billiard room, but they say, what do you mean caught out? We are fine just where we are. Frey with 3,500, got to take it all the way around. Again, abusing that verticality is the survivors. They have to drop down, climb up, tank, missing the smacks. Frey still decently alive on the HP charge. Going to have to get the clear on that, and they split. But again, just the damage. They get it wiped up. Nobody goes down. 75% bonus left. Oh, but look at this pull down. They pull Woo! Grizz down. They pounce Grizz. They punch Grizz. They spit on Grizz. <laughs> I'm telling you, the picking on Grizz is going to be a theme for this campaign, let me tell you. It's this back-to-back -back chapter. Grizz is going to go down. They just pick on him. They triple stack. He goes That's down. Great. Opens up the DB. And if you look here, they're going to hit down on the side. Rochelle gets a little separated from the team. And as you can see, the jockey does n I thought the jockey actually went for Grizz there, but finds another target. I actually went for Yaft. Yaft is down. And now the DB is open on two survivors. And this is going to be the last chance for damage. Charger chilling up top. Smoker misses the pull. Jockey lands. Charger misses. But the spit will still work out on the Nick as Nick has nowhere to go when he's common locked. Who needs the Charger when you got a Smoker and a Spitter? That's what I have to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. And the game is still neck and neck, ascendant with the slight lead, but in comes the quad attempt. They get some serious damage on that, rolling doubles, taking a long time to get the clears, and they go down to 82%. Beautiful hit out of Corey. Tank of Yaf, bring it in, in. Watch out, ascendant catches that one split survivor around the tree. Tank gonna try to finish him off here as the survivors go for the help, but he's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm gonna get this corner, thank you very much. And plays around the boat, gets some more smacks, gets one on Krycha, uh, uh, environmental damage, keeps him in the corner. Where are you going, 2K HP left. And look at the health totals, 153 bonus left. Yes, you got one player down, but still, they've gotten rid of so much. And here comes Innuendo, committing with his tank, gets the car in a decent spot, it's in between the two trailers, decides to abandon it. Riz gets separated with his teammate, but actually regroups. Smoker yeah. gets a pull, gets cleared. He has now punched three different survivors at this point. He is in capped shockwave. He's going to come over and guard this pounce. Miss the punch there. In cap goes out. Innuendo gets it there. And now he's going to chase Grizz down. And oh, the damage is there, but look how close this is now. Ooh, he backs it up. So lucky. Oh. I say it's going to be a thing picking on Grizz, but he's going to be a little successful there. They will make safe room as we go into the next chapter. Hakori pushing it. Look at this double charge. Nah. Ooh. Ooh, they hunt in the back. Look at the boomer come out and block it, maximizing the damage. Oh. Great job there from Ascendant. With their, with their back on the burner a little bit by about 100 and some points, I believe it was. Not much at all, though. Very close and game. At this point, Lion actually spawned on the gravel pile. He had to run it all the way across on the highway, brings his car in from behind, but he hits it on the left, the survivors run right. Now the car is gone, he's got 2k HP left. Charge, smoke, jockey, he's getting some smacks. Yes, going to not quite finish him off. Charge, uh, jock, in there for a bit. He does continue to get some smacks, but 1k HP left on Lion. The down onto Grizz again. And this was an interesting spot, MK, right here for Ascendant. They, they take it very gingerly, and they pay the price. Hunter charge catch on opposite ends of the earth. Jockey even gets in there for a bit, and that is going to annihilate Ascendant. Yeah, I would have liked to see them go inside the building without the spitter just to play it safe and they put themselves in unfor unfortunate circumstances, just from my point of view. But that would work in favor for Ascendant as now they get this hittable into, pl or, or, uh, into play. Unfortunately for Grizz, he's not going to be able to use any of them, but he gets his in cap as there's a double team on a survivor in the back. We're focusing down Grizz pretty well here. He's down to 14 and change. He will solidify the second in cap by chasing the survivor. But unfortunately, as far as for his tank, he will die off here, not getting much more. But look at this catch back here, no, Watch this. Look at this jockey. Whoop. Oh, oh, wow. So beautiful. And I actually watched their stream. That was a little bit of a miscommunication. Nobody ah. said nobody said they were leaving there, no, leaving that building. No one 
said nothing. So when they did so, it was kind of like, huh? Mm. And they yeah. would suffer a lot of damage for this. But they get to the top. The charger lands, gets cleared instantly. Hunter like, lands, gets cleared instantly. Both things get cleared instantly. Why not the smoker? Quad boom. Look at not able to get the oh. clear. And the end cap goes out. But let me tell you, no, it is not it. It's going to come down to this hit. They need 130 points to get the victory. That is all that they need. Hakori needs to do damage here. They have a quad for the last hit. Is it possible for them to end it? Right here, the smoker lands. Nothing else really goes, but watch that HP. 170, 160, 150, 139. They get the M2 clear, and they're going to be able to crawl into the safe room. And unfortunately for Hakori, they're going to be down single-digit points here. And yeah. you know what, the, what happens to this map? No one ever plays this finale. It is a victory for Ascendant. Or is it? No. Or is it? They are going to go to Chapter it? 5. And watch this Hunter and all. This Hunter was so sexy. Watch this Sexo Hunter. Boop! Curve around <laughs> the corner. 17 oh, damage. God. The spit. The charge. They're going to make Kryja pay for it. Jockey comes in. Gets an M2, and look at that opening attack damage and all. Huge. Cried it down to 42. Insane. Yaft going to be rolling it in on the tank, but Ascendant got the perfect setup. They running them around like crazy. Yes, two smacks. We got the Hunter, Smoker, Jockey, Car way over, and they are going to be able to get the Rock smack. Yes. Krycha goes down, but so does the tank. One tank in the books. Shockwave going to be bringing in the second tank. 5k, 5.5 left. Brings it in. Smoke pull. Instant clear. Where are the cars? Already used them up for the most part. Uh, tank got this last car to play with right here. And he struggles to get this into play. Really, he's a meat shield for a bit. Trying to block himself off. 3.2k HP left. Nice little rock. Love that. But he can't, he can't do anything with this car. It's just not cooperating with him. And this was a struggle to watch. Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, the only thing that worked out for him is that when he punched it the first time, it popped up sideways so he could use it as a shield yeah. and to min uh, minimize the amount of damage. But right now, they're split pretty hard. Charger lands, Boomer lands. And you know the story for Innuendo. Yeah, there's the, there you go, Innuendo, the car. <laughs> More than one occasion. <laughs> Called out of position, and they will kill off the second tank of this chapter. And the crazy part about it is that that's not yeah. it. There's three nope. tanks. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about if you ever needed some help for a Cory, look at this tank spawn. And they have no idea about it. They drop down, double ladder punch onto the survivors, <laughs> double punch again into the corner. Body block was actually good by the survivor up top. This actually will prove to be a very helpful for the survivor team. And you can think about how could they possibly survive this, right? Due, due to what happened. And if you look here, he gets a corner. He's at 2,400 HP. There's a charger playing with Zoe, so no one's shooting the tank right now. But look at the pistol damage going on under the tank right now. He decommits. He loses 900 points from that corner. Actually, 1,000 from the pistols on the ground. And here's the pole to clean up. Nope, actually Krija oh. clutches it yet again. And now he comes out here, misses the rock, shoots, uh, shoots down about 300 more HP, and the tank is in. The hunter is a distraction. One punch goes out. The pistols are shooting the tank. One more punch to end it, but AK cannot do it. And Krija will be able to pick up his teammates, but they won't be able to make it to the safe room. Not eventually they will wipe out. Coming up 50 points shy, a full distance, but a good good showing for Ascendant. And do I need to say more here? No, why don't you should take this away? Yeah, I mean, he brings it in. Krycha, look at it, the dumpster. I mean, right in there, absolute pinpoint accuracy. He says, you know what? Grizz is dead. This guy is so dead. It's done. And they're down to three survivors. They can't do it. Krycha is on another level the the freaky fish himself he just does not stop coming up with ways to impress and astound what a follow-up off of that insane survival on their survivor side they, this is just perfection yes it was and the gg goes next out there from zyko and that's because actually no they had to play each other for two more hours after yeah. this on two more maps 
and crazy, crazy finish to that game. Bryja clutching it for his team, the Polish feet on himself, getting that dumpster in there and solidifying the wipe. And they stay undefeated after five weeks of King, of King and Furnace Cup now, 5-0. Also, can I just say, keep in mind, Kreitcher was the one who got hit by that curving hunter straight outside the safe room. That kind of reminds me of the gif of the tank throwing the rock, and the rock like curves to the person to hit. I don't know if you've seen that, but I know I know people have seen this. Like the rock is already midair, and it just curves to land on the person. Such an insane hunter catch, but Kreitcher did not let that get in his head. You know what I mean? That's what's so sick about these top teams. And that impresses me so much is when you are in the seat trying to make that happen and something crazy like that happens to you it is so easy to get into your head and be like we're already done this finale is done Krejci locks in clears all three SIs by himself follows it up with the dumpster it's insane yes it was but it was an absolutely fabulous games to cast with you now as well I mean this was a great week oh, of yeah. battles back and forth even when we were not casting together, the games were battling back and forth. And I expect the week six and week seven only will show better games. Even as the lower to mid-tier teams start balancing out, their games are going to start to get better. And we already know that as we've been talking about it in the past and all about some of these teams that we want to put something together for them, which we're just about there. We're about to get the Discord yep. up shortly. We're picking out a few more teams for this tournament that we're going to be hosting. And it's going to be a little bit different than what everybody's used to. And it's going to be an annual thing, which we will do. But it's for the newer players in the community. It won't be for the top tier teams. It'll be for the lower tier teams. But we want something specifically for them so they can put themselves together and experience what it's like to fight at the top tier level and get that victory. So we'll get that along the way. Now we'll work on it a little bit later. Maybe tomorrow we get something for the people. And I'm excited for it. But... Whew, what a show. This one was a long one. Now we had a yeah. lot of highlights this week. Let me tell you, man, I, I, I just assume it's going to get bigger and bigger with the games that come along. I really, really think so. Yeah, I mean, it's what I was saying. Like, I, we didn't have that many matches that we covered this week, but it was like it, they were so clip heavy. And it was just like, I got to include this clip and that clip and the other clip. And it was uh, it paid off. This was a great show. We got two more coming up. And of course, more Left 4 Dead 2 competitive action non-stop. You think one cup ends and it's over. No, it keeps going and going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. And uh, I'm excited to see in the coming months, you know, new developments. The ending of the Kings and Furnace Cup, Kamika Cup, how it plays out. Uh, what is, what um, awaits us at each twist and turn. And you'll be able to watch it all back here on Tuesdays for the Kings and Furnace Cup highlight show. Yeah, it was something that uh, we, me and Na talked about, or Na and myself have talked about. We usually do our live shows on Monday, but we did switch it up to Tuesday for a, a pretty good reason, uh, because it burns us out so much having to get all those things it's done in one day. So we'll put the live show on a Tuesday. It gives us a little more time to make it a little bit more quality um, to get more clips in there, because... I'll be honest, on Mondays, me and all, and all myself, we're just going to take a day off, take a break, yeah. and we'll get back in the grind on Tuesday. And we do all our highlights on Tuesdays for you guys, and um, that's just what we're going to do forward for live shows. Uh, when the Kamika Cup gets put into their bracket stage, and I would say also the King and Furnace Cup hits playoffs, maybe me and all and myself might be able to do something with both kind of in the same night. Yeah. But for now... We'll focus on one tournament that's in a Swiss stage because it'll be way too much to cut two uh, uh, highlight shows in the same week from two separate tournaments. I just don't think that is feasible in the current state that we're in. Maybe later on, but <laughs> yeah. right now that'll be, that's what we'll, we'll focus on. But I think that's going to end it for today. Is there anything else you would like to set off here or talk about before we'll do a raid? I, I, you're already going to cover it with all my shout-outs. I just want to say uh, how much I love these... Highlight shows, getting to relive the action. It never fails to disappoint, and uh, it's great to be here. Absolutely. I appreciate it, too, my friend. It's been great casting since we've met, but let's keep it going. But that is going to end it for today. Let's find a raid. Holy crap. Why does Zyko have, like, 500 viewers? <laughs> okay. Let's go, wow. Zyko. 
They want to see the tank rocks. I'm telling you, they right. they need to. They want to see those tank rocks. All right, well, we got to raid Zyko then. I mean, it makes sense oh, yeah. too. All oh, right. Yeah. Raid is activated. Shout out to the tournament admins for running the tournament, the players for playing in the tournament, the server admins for having the servers for us to play on, and most important, everybody at home for watching. Without you guys, it is not possible. Thank you for joining. Love you guys. See you soon. Goodbye.